Welcome to Bible 360 Jude. Judas was a half-brother of Jesus, but we'll follow the English tradition in calling him Jude so as not to confuse him with other Judases. In the Gospels, Jude questions Jesus' sanity, even trying to stop him at one point. It was only after Jesus' resurrection that Jude became a believer and eventually a traveling evangelist. He's probably addressing Jewish Christians because he assumes his recipients are pretty familiar not only with the Old Testament, but with other popular Jewish literature of the time. His hope for the church is that mercy, love, and peace will be multiplied among them. He wishes he could spend his letter describing God's glorious salvation, but an emergency demands his attention. The congregations he's addressing are being led astray by sneaky and immoral teachers. Jude says the full proof of how untrustworthy they are can be found primarily in their behavior. They use religion as an excuse to promote sexual immorality. They claim authority for themselves instead of bowing to Jesus' lordship. Jude says, don't even tolerate these folks. For the sake of the church, these deceivers must be confronted. The spirit of Jesus Christ directs our lives and conduct, not the self-serving spirit of these guys. Kick them out. Jude rapidly fires off a list of arrogant and deceptive leaders God punished in the Old Testament. Folks, their Jewish mothers probably told them not to be like, such as Balaam or Cain. These men were not only deceptive and destructive, but they brought others down with them in their rebellion. Likewise, in the wilderness, Yahweh destroyed faithless leaders who tried to undermine loyalty to Moses and Yahweh. This was necessary, otherwise Israel would have fallen apart and fallen away. Or take Sodom and Gomorrah, who were out of control sexually and exploitive. Look what happened to them. Jude doesn't really try to convince his readers of his argument. Those familiar with the Old Testament don't need to be convinced that God punishes the wicked. They just have to be reminded, which serves as a warning. He also references the book of Enoch, which is not scripture. This story describes Noah's grandfather Enoch as a prophet sent to pronounce judgment to naughty angels. Some angels have had sex with women and their babies are powerful but destructive Nephilim. God's judgment against these angels is firm but, and harsh. One of the reasons the book of Enoch was so popular in that time period was its uncompromising message that the world is wicked and that God's judgment and return is real. Enoch describes hell, for instance, with far more detail than any book in the scriptures, and is practically obsessed with purity, judgment, and renewal. Jude brings this up as a well-known and popular story that illustrates what he's trying to let them know. Rebellion against God has only one possible outcome, alienation and destruction. Later, Jude brings up the book, The Testament or Assumption of Moses. This was another popular Jewish story. In the book, Moses is instructing Joshua to lead directly the right way and to follow God's instructions. As the archangel Michael comes to take Moses' body away, the devil seeks to condemn Moses and take Moses' body. The angel Michael defends Moses. However, the devil, Unlike the devil, Michael refuses to pronounce judgment because judgment belongs to God alone. If God wants Moses' body to be saved, it would bla be blasphemous to speak against it. Likewise, those who speak against Jesus' body, which God resurrected, are blasphemous as well. Neither the book of Enoch nor the testament of Moses were considered scripture, but many Jews did think they were true and many revered and enjoyed these stories. Even if these stories are more biblical fairy tales, the morals are very clear. If you rebel against God or are sexually immoral or condemn God's chosen messengers, such as Jesus, you are in danger of judgment. These folks are demonic in their actions and goals. They are worthless trees, dangerous seas, and destructive hidden reefs that shipwreck faith. These folks are searching for followers, patrons, and benefits. They're not just preaching a philosophy or religion. They lust for power and control over others. And they don't care that their counsel destroys lives and faith. Plus, they encourage whining, boasting, sexual immorality, rebellion, and other shameful behaviors God has always been against. And these things are the opposite of what Jesus preached. Jude says, thousands of angels punishing them is too good a fate for them. Such leaders are leaving destruction in their wake, but God doesn't want them, these people, to be destroyed. God's Holy Spirit is in the business of construction. Jude preaches mercy and compassion to individuals who've been led astray. They should be shown patience and brought back into the fold. But a primary way to show mercy is to snatch them out of the fire. Jude calls on the church to correct and teach the truth and way of Jesus for those who have been deceived or ensnared. Jude, who once opposed Jesus, understands from firsthand experience Jesus is able to change the heart and save those who once opposed him. 
It's worth noting Jude only identifies himself as a bondservant of Jesus Christ. In a strong contrast to the self-serving and indulgent leaders he writes against, Jude asks for no gifts, advantages, or deference because he's Jesus' brother. Instead, he says they should give authority to the teachings of the apostles and to Jesus. This book reminds us bad advice about how to orient your life will lead to a life that is disoriented. Following after Jesus requires standing against enticing and self-serving advice of attractive but sinful leaders. Standing up for what God's word says matters. Who you listen to matters because it's gonna affect your life and where you're going. God does judge corruption and wickedness, but his preference, like Jude, is for grace, mercy, and love to multiply. Now, judgment should frighten us. However, Jude closes by assuring us, Jesus will build us up. He will sustain us and keep us from stumbling if we stick with him. Jesus is the true leader who has divine authority, majesty, and power to save.